So systemic racism is a system of social policies and practices that interconnect to create and maintain routine advantages for whites while producing cumulative chronic adverse outcomes for black people and other people of color. Now why that's important and why this is so distinct from individual personal hatred is that the most radical white Americans and people who are white and live in America and who are not necessarily citizens, because it applies both ways, they could be the most radical pro-racial equity, health equity, social equity people in the universe, S living right next door to someone who doesn't have those beliefs. And the system will not distinguish the two of them in terms of the outcomes they will have. Right? This is really important because it's very hard to not feel like you've sort of been held personally targeted and responsible for creating this system. No, nobody, no one alive in this moment created the entire system, but it will not draw distinctions between those two, which means the, the blessing of that is that we don't have to take it personally and we can all be actives in, in making a change. So let me tell you about punishment. How do you get in the juvenile justice system? Sure. Some do something horrible, but many, many, many get tracked into the system through a process of hyper-punishment built on suspension and expulsion. So here are some stats just to get you together, and this is the Department of Education, so this is their own data. Black students are suspended and expelled at nearly four times the rate of white students. Even though the Department of Education cannot identify any studies or proof that black students behave any differently in more extreme ways to warrant this gap. 42% of, of, of black students are 42% of all the referrals to police, 35% of those actually arrested in school, and you know, there may be 14, 13% of the student population in the country. 70% of in-school arrests, black and Latinx students, 18% of preschool enrollment, but 48% of black preschoolers receive more than one out of school suspension? So let me get this right. You're suspending four-year-olds? Four-year-olds? And then you want to know why cats have a mental health problem? I just cannot for the life of me understand what you would be saying to a parent that half of the black children who are going to preschool need to be suspended. How could you talk about a mental health process that's an outgrowth of a punishment system and not ask that question up front? This is a health crisis right here. White students represent 43% of preschool enrollment and 26% of more than out one school suspension. That's awful too. So actually while we're at it, let's cut that out. Because why are we suspending four-year-olds? That's my first question. I mean, you know, that's really the fundamental question that we have to ask. We have another question over here. Yes, hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for this talk. I'm an associate professor, a nurse and midwife, and your discussion was thought-provoking to me, especially when you talked about the preschool students. And I really saw how there's a lack of humanity, how black people, other people of color are not yeah. seen as human. And yeah. that's really at the core of these structural and systemic issues. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know your thoughts on how, because I feel like we do this song and dance to let people see we're human. Mm -hmm. You know, we love, we're loved. We want to be healthy. Sorry, I'm getting emotional because no, it's, it's, it's like it's terrible. a cycle I mean... over and over again. Mm -hmm. So what can we do so that people can just see us as being human? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Thank you for that, and I, I totally agree. <clears throat> it's, very, it's, very, it's very stressful. You know, I've just finished, I'm line editing a, a manuscript that's on this topic, and writing it was, you know, like pulling teeth, and, you know, there was a lot of tears. Certain chapters in particular, I was like, I, I can't even, I, I got another, I don't want any more data. I don't want to know this anymore. So I'm, I'm completely in agreement. I guess. The, the, I would pull hope from modifying the relationships you just laid out. You said these structures are what keep people thinking that we're, or no, be, people don't see us as human and that's what builds these structures. But it's also the structures that build new people who believe we are not human. Right? Be, we are being created to normalize systemic racism. That's in our hands. We can undo that. 
right? And that means we'll have new and different white people, right? This idea that white people have all the, nobody's fixed in perpetuity. All this stuff was God invented. We can all be different. And I have a tremendous faith, despite the fact that I know quite contradictory evidence to this faith, that, <laughs> that there are enough people of all backgrounds who don't want it to be this way, but they don't know how to get out. And they don't even see what it is. So I have complete faith in that. You know, I don't think it's everybody. There's a lot of people who know exactly what it's about, and they don't want change. That's why they don't want curriculum that will reveal what it is, because it will transform their children into, you know, from my perspective, people who would be able to see humanity and ask fundamental questions like, how could you possibly do this? You see? So uh, even though it has already been created and in a sense seems to feed on a dehumanized framework, that is not in perpetuity. That's in our hands. And so it's really about knowing that we become who we are based on the relationships we establish in society and the terms that we normalize. As soon as we make them abnormal and unacceptable, that's our road out. So I appreciate that question. Thank you so much oh. for that. Dr. Trisha Rose, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, goodness. Thank you. That's beautiful. Job. That's very kind. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs>